Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlov. <laughs> I wish I wasn't laughing, but <laughs> I have to laugh at myself yet again because I'm remaking this monologue a moment ago. I just completed one and then went to check the video and discovered that it, the record uh, button wasn't on to the best of my awareness. I pressed it so quickly and then came over to this chair to uh, sit down and make the recording that I didn't notice that I must not have pressed the record button on my computer screen uh, sufficiently. Either that or I completely forgot, which um, may be a sign that uh, I'm on the uh, early stages of some form of dementia or Alzheimer's. My mother, a saintly individual, a yoga teacher of whom I have uh, spoken fondly in a previous monologue, had Alzheimer's. She had a pretty serious case of it. And her father, my grandfather, had Alzheimer's as well. So, to be honest, I think I'm vulnerable. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if I continue these monologues. You can watch the progressive decline of my brain. <laughs> that, that will be an interesting thing to watch because, in general, I think I do a pretty good job of maintaining a lot of mental activity. And for the most part, if I'm not having <laughs> some kind of a lapse like that, I have a feeling that these monologues are pretty coherent. But it's something I need to watch out for. Now, let me get to the point I had made in the earlier version that I, uh, I'm i going to summarize it and I'm going to go through it a little bit faster than I did before because it has to do with the Bible and the uh, tendency of, I guess, what are called biblical fundamentalists to take the Bible literally. Now, as an undergraduate in college, I studied biblical Hebrew. Biblical Hebrew, incidentally, is very different than modern Hebrew. But in the course of studying uh, Biblical Hebrew and also taking courses on the Bible itself back in the 1960s, I came across a, a book by Julius Wellhausen called Prolegomena to the Study of the Ancient Hebrew Kingdom. And Wellhausen basically initiated the modern field of biblical criticism. He's the fellow who came up with the idea that there were four different authors to the Bible, that the, he basically completely demolished the idea that the Bible was written. And when I say the Bible, I'm referring to the five books of Moses. They're attributed to Moses, that they were all written by Moses, or as some might say, well, dictated by God to Moses. But Wellhausen makes it quite clear that there were multiple authors, and his view became the consensus view of biblical critics. Uh, I also want to point out at this moment that I have an earlier interview. I'm going to link to it now with Richard Smoley, the author of How God Became God, in which he summarizes a lot of biblical criticism and brings it more up to date. But we can say this, certainly, about the Bible that if we try to look in the Egyptian records for anything comparable to a uh, history of uh, Jewish slaves in Egypt who escaped and who crossed the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds and were pursued by the Egyptian army and the Egyptian army was destroyed and the flooding waters after the Jews passed through, there's no records of anything of that at all. There's barely any reference to the ancient Hebrews. There's one or two brief references in the Egyptian records. So, the story of Exodus, which is so basic, so fundamental to Judeo-Christian mythology, uh, lacks empirical corroboration. Not only that, take the story of uh, Joshua entering into the land of Canaan, coming upon the city of Jericho and how the walls came tumbling down. You know the song, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, 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 Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. 
Well, Wellhausen, as I recall, in his book, which was written in the early part of the 19th, or excuse me, early part of the 20th century, notes that at that time, archaeologists, I hope I have this correct, but if, if not, forgive me because the sources may be different, but the facts are that archaeologists have uncovered the walls of Jericho, and the walls of Jericho did come tumbling down, but not overnight. The walls of Jericho came down over a lengthy period of time, at least a century or two. So the idea uh, of the Jewish uh, people being led into the promised land by God, who oversaw their military victories, uh, is probably a fiction made up after the fact. And there are numerous other examples. I think that... Uh, as, as we get past the period of Joshua and into the actual kingdom of Israel, the historical records become more and more corroborated with the biblical accounts. But uh, earlier accounts, not so much. Now, I'm inclined to think that there are truths in the Bible. There are ethical truths. There are spiritual truths. There's a lot of cultural information and an enormous wealth of cultural information there. But it would be a mistake to assume that the Bible is literally the Word of God, literally physically true. <laughs> no way, as far as I am concerned. And I know occasionally there are people who comment on uh, my monologues or on some of the interviews, in particular the ones on reincarnation, and say, no, the Bible rules out <laughs> reincarnation. It says you only live once. Well, it may say that, but I find there's no particular reason to take uh, anything of that sort at face value when it comes to not just the Bible, but to all scriptures. I find them fascinating. I think they're very important. There are multiple levels. I think it's fair to say you can interpret any scripture on seven different dimensions at least. And there's a lot to be gleaned from studying the scriptures. But uh, I am, for your information, nowhere close to taking any of that literally. So, uh, one of the uh, viewers suggested, I think, that uh, my statement about uh, God intervening in history on behalf of the Jewish people might represent uh, how I really felt, for example, about the state of Israel and Zionism. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I certainly didn't imply, mean to imply it that way. And that's why I'm bringing up this discussion. Now, Yuval Noah Harari, a historian, an Israeli historian, uh, wrote a very popular book, several actually, but the, the first of these popular books called Sapiens is sort of the history of the human race. And he makes a great point in it. One of the defining characteristics of being human, maybe the single most defining characteristic of being human is our capacity for creating meta narratives about events that did not occur. Other animals seem to be <laughs> able to communicate about real events that they observe, but I, I don't believe other animals have the capacity to d create stories that aren't true, which is unique to humans and to human culture. And these stories or meta narratives serve a very important role. They are the glue that holds cultures together. That the problem is, to the extent that those stories are not true, the glue often falls apart at some point in time, no longer capable of holding a culture together. So, what does this mean to you? What is the lesson here for you and me, for us? What are the meta narratives that you find important in your life? What are the meta narratives that guide you in the world today? And do you accept them as literally true? Is it possible that you are holding on to a meta narrative which uh, is not 
what it appears to be, that it should be interpreted differently than you interpret it. Give that some thought. And once again, thank you. Thank you for being with me.